So guys, you know what time it is? It is coffee Get time! No man, it's just the video is after the coffee time. So guys, coffee time! time. You are annoying man. <laughs> Hello guys, it's Shit Game Plays, I'm Fabio Pisco, and it is good to be back. Not that I was away, but it, it just felt right to say this. So today's video is one of the most requested videos I had, um, like in the, in the previous months, yes, which is 1 time 16 gigabytes versus 2 times 8 gigabytes versus 4 times 4 gigabytes. So take in consideration that the build tested is uh, Ryzen 5 3600, an RX 5700 XT, and the motherboard is an X570S, yes, which is dual channel, like the Ryzen, of course. So using 4 sticks of RAM means that you are still using dual channel, but 2 sticks of RAM per channel. That's the only difference. As for the frequency used, I use the most common frequency nowadays and the cheapest one actually, which is 3200 MHz. As for the timings and subtimings, all configurations have all the same subtimings. As for the timings, only the one, the one time 16 gigabytes, this, this RAM that I bought ex specific, specific, specifically for this video, um, so leave that damn like because I expended money on this. The timings are CL16, 19, 16, 16, 36. As for this, this, this awesome RAM, it wouldn't make the same timing, so I did 16, 18, so decreased 19 to 18, 17, 17, 36. So the only difference is this one, and the real world difference for this will be exactly zero. So the results you will see have nothing to do with that. Also, this RAM was also easier to buy due to the sponsor of today's video. Today's video is sponsored by GVG Mall, where you can get a Windows 10 serial key for only $17. And by using my discount code, you get a 20% off discount, making it even less, $14. After the payment, you'll receive the serial key, and to activate it, just go to your Windows settings and introduce that same key. And voila! You have an activated system for only $14. So guys, thanks a lot for watching, don't forget to hit like, subscribe and share this video because that really helps a lot, and see you in the conclusion. Today's first game is Assassin's Creed Odyssey using ultra high settings. I do know that in order for the results to stand out more I could have used lower settings, but as we all know, well, this game is still pretty CPU intensive that way, and that can be seen in the results. At 1080p single channel, 1x 16GB, we'll have indeed lower performance being it average FPS or 1% lows. Interestingly enough, at 1440p, 2 sticks of 8GB will actually perform better than all, and at 4K we are 100% GPU bottlenecked, and the results are all within the margin of error. The second game tested today is Battlefield 5 using the X11 in the first mission after the tutorial. Well, this is one of the most interesting results I've seen so far. The X12 functions way better than the X11, but I wanted to test the older API to see how it would perform, and even after several tests and retests, the results kept being the same. 
At 1440p and 4K, since we are GPU bottlenecked, the results are almost the same, with only 1x16GB being a tad slower. But at 1080p, we have a massive difference in the 1% lows using 2x8GB. Like I said before, I retested this several times and 2x8GB would give me always around 100fps in the 1% lows, while 1x16GB and 4x4GB would give me around 60fps. Strange? Yeah, a lot. But the results are real. Overall, even 1x16GB would be ok. Moving on. Now with Need for Speed Heat. Like I always say, I like to include this game since the game engine used, which is Frostbite, stresses a lot the CPU, and the memory channels have a direct impact on the CPU results, as can be seen. Besides 4K, where we are completely GPU bottlenecked, 2 times 8 GB and 4 times 4 GB will bring us virtually the same results, since those same results are within the margin of error. The only real difference is with 1x16GB that will bring us considerably lower average and 1% lows numbers, while also bringing us a bigger stutter here and there. Besides that, all fine. Now the beloved Red Dead Redemption 2 using the Vulcan API. Take in consideration that these results are the ones shown in the end of the benchmark and they can be deceiving sometimes. Mostly in the minimums. But well, finally we have some decent results and as can be seen all average FPS results are within the same, being the only difference in the minimums at 1080p going from 29.3 FPS with only one stick to 34.9 FPS with four sticks. Overall, this game is heavily GPU-sided, hence the differences being almost null. This time we have The Division 2 using the X12 and high settings. This is another well-optimized title and we can see once again that the results are all within the margin of error apart from the 1080p ones. At 1080p both 2x8GB and 4x4GB have around the same values while 1x16GB has 12 FPS less in the 1% lows. Though, all the configurations will work pretty well in this game without any hard stutters. So, even when single channel is not advisable at all, using it would still be fine for most users. Moving on. Yes, to the bloodletting! Now with Borderlands 3 also using the X12 and high settings. This game is really dependent on RAM capacity as it can be seen in the video I'm showing right now, but in terms of single channel versus dual channel, not that much. Still we can see once again at 1080p that the 1% lows are a bit lower with a single channel configuration, and although it can't be seen here and only in the 0.1% lows, the 1x16GB will in fact bring us a bit more stutters when loading the map, but after that it will be smooth as the other configurations, just with a bit less FPS. Moving on.
The last game of today is Metro Exodus in Moscow's first mission. The results are once again the same as before. I must say that this game is really well optimized. I have tested it with different amounts of RAM, different core counts and still it would perform almost the same in every situation. Meaning that to run this game properly you may focus more on GPU, CPU and of course an SSD is always welcome. In terms of results, we have all results within the margin of error since this is a gameplay test. And overall, having single channel or dual channel doesn't seem to matter much here, even at above 100 FPS. So guys, concluding, is it really worth to... not, not worth, but I mean... What configuration is the best? Let's start from there. What configuration is the best? 1 times 16 gigabytes, 2 times 8 gigabytes, or 4 times 4 gigabytes? Well, obviously, the single channel is a big no. Thank God. Mostly, if you are using an APU, let's say a Ryzen 5 APU, uh, a laptop, using only one RAM stick will give you half the bandwidth. And that is the main performance issue that most people have with APUs. They only use one RAM stick, single channel, and the performance, which is connected to the channels, because the bandwidth of the, the internal GPU will be the bandwidth of your RAM. That's how it works. So, if your RAM bandwidth is half, half, I mean, um, well, the performance will also be half. So, yeah, it's kind of shitty. So, if you are going for an APU, Dual channel is the way always, not even a consideration. Now, with nowadays prices, I don't really think it is worth to buy any single stick of RAM. It isn't. I don't really recommend single channel in any, in any configuration. Now, one thing is, I was surprised. I actually was surprised with the single channel performance. Okay, that in most games we are GPU bottlenecked, not at 1080p, but what I mean is that even when we are not GPU bottlenecked, the results, the result difference is not that big. I mean, I was expecting something really, really bigger. And I was really surprised that um, the, the single channel configuration still hold its ground. As for the 2 times 8 gigabytes and for the 4 times 4 gigabytes, well, it is more or less the same. Overall, 4 times 4 gigabytes will be a bit better, a bit better in some scenarios, while in some... I, I don't really know how to, uh, how to say, but in some really odd, some really odd scenarios like Battlefield 5, the X11, um, the 2 times 8 gigabytes will grant us way higher 1% lows. God knows why, but it will. But overall, like I said, 4 times 4 gigabytes is a bit better indeed. But well, there is a catch. Because if you are using 4 sticks of RAM, it will be a bit harder to overclock. And while you are using 2 sticks of RAM, it will be a bit easier to overclock. If they both have the same, um, uh, the same memory chips, of course. So, yeah, it will be, having only two sticks will be way lighter on the CPU IMC, so we, you will be able to overclock at higher frequencies, and that will give you a higher boost uh, comparing to the 4 uh, four times 4 gigabytes. So, yeah, 4 times 4 gigabytes is a bit better, but 2 times 8 gigabytes may overclock higher, giving you way better results. So, for me... For me only, the best you can get now is 2 times 8 gigabytes, no doubts, and maybe later another 2 times 8 gigabytes and have 4 times 8 gigabytes, which is 32 gigabytes. So yeah, that's all. So guys, hope you really enjoyed the video. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget, hit like, subscribe and share this video. Leave a comment in the comment section and tell me what you think about these results and what is your opinion and what is your configuration. Thanks a lot for watching and see you in the next video.